bones, barely dressed in flesh. The wheelchair cradled the death wish I was never granted. And she, she was beautiful. Ribs protruding the cage, suffering through her skin. I had never seen a corpse cry before. So I, I caught her teardrops on my tongue like they were snowflakes, believing her strength to starve would somehow melt into me, and I too would be pretty. Like how my friends Charlie and Ashley were pretty, letting the ends of their toothbrush massage the backs of their hopes and flushing down their insecurities. I watched from a distance analyzing every note played out in their secret symphony as if they were hallelujahs, plotting my salvation. But there was no rescue or deliverance. There was no mapped out directions for the disabled, unable to grow the balls to make themselves puke. There was no participation ribbon for the loser. Just a certificate sketched in the stretch marks of my curves with the words, no guy will ever love the fat girl. So I... I grew up hating that girl, that moth that was never quite the butterfly, that tangled up mess that started binging in the junior high, that girl that would hide wrappers and napkins before placing them in trash cans so that parents and friends would never get suspicious about my self-medication. I wanted that girl to die, cried as my knees hit the ground, sealing letters to the sky above, begging God to give me anorexia, or just, just some part of me I could be proud of. I placed my picture on milk cartons looking for the girl I once was, but five years, it's a long time to be missing. I guess shame makes hide and seek easy, especially when no one noticed you were gone in the first place. Like that Day I sold my soul to keep the devil's secret, no longer able to keep him from taking my self-confidence and impregnating my self-image with the food baby image that this situation couldn't be aborted. I resorted to dipping each binge in devil's chocolate. Sweet and suicidal, just like this girl. This girl that was never counted as a casualty. You see, society makes fun of the girls to eat their feelings. You see, binging as self-sabotaging. But until you see your words are victimizing, this girl will spend the rest of her existence gazing back at her reflection, hating her beauty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Lauren Bagwell, and for seven years, this was my reality. When I was in the seventh grade, I got diagnosed with an eating disorder known as binge eating disorder. And now there are three types of eating disorders, binge eating disorder, anorexia, and bulimia. In binge eating disorder, it's the most common of the three eating disorders, but it's the one that's least talked about. So for that reason, I didn't know I could receive help until the summer before my freshman year in college. Um, what my life looked like, and in every day living with binge eating disorder, um, is I would consume thousands of calories a day. I would overexercise. I would crash diet. I was the poster child for failed diets. And I would weigh myself before and after every meal. But the worst part of this whole process was that the way I talked to myself was so negative. And to kind of give you a glimpse of how important positive talk to yourself is, I want to try a little exercise. So I want you to turn to the person next to you. And I want you to think of something that you are great at or something about yourself that you love. And I want you to start with the phrase, I am great at, or I have great blank. This could be, I have great hair. I am great at the piano, something. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I am great at... Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, bring it back, bring it back. So for some of you, you're pretty confident people, but I imagine for the majority of you, this was pretty awkward. Some of you might have started off saying, well, 
I may be kind of good at singing, or I kind of sort of like my hair, or I guess my nose is okay, you know? Uh, my point being is, in our society, it's wrong to give yourself a compliment. Our society has told us that loving yourself is not the right way to live. On the contrary, this got me to thinking, what if we took something like the golden rule? You all know the golden rule, right? Yeah, no, you're just pretending you don't? Okay. <laughs> the golden rule is treat others the way you wanna be treated. But I thought, what if we reverse this, okay? What if the golden rule was no longer treat others the way you wanna be treated, and it was treat yourself and love yourself the way you love and treat others. You see, my journey with having a binge eating disorder taught me that the way I talked to myself was never how I would talk to someone else. And this is a problem because the love you have for yourself and the respect you have for yourself is kind of the mission control to the love that you can pour onto others. Your relationship with yourself is the relationship upon which all other relationships are founded on. Okay, so what this looks like. We all have our imperfections, right? You have those things, those quirks about you. My friend Rachel, she snorts when she laughs. But that's the thing I love about her the most because you know that you had a funny joke when Rachel starts snorting, right? So imperfections are okay. What's not okay is when we allow those imperfections to become insecurities. The truth of the matter is you were created with a body like no one else has. You have a group of weird talents that no one else has because you have a talent and a purpose and a calling that no one else can fulfill. And there are several truths that I've learned on this journey to self-love and self-respect. And I wanna leave you with those truths today. Five things I know to be true about humanity. Number one, the probability of your individual existence is one in 400 quadrillion. That's no misprint, that's brilliant. That's 400 quadrillion reasons why your life is no accident. There is uniqueness in your purpose and purpose in your existence. Number two, you are imperfect but you are also beautiful. And I may not be any expert in cartography, but it seems to me that our personalities are merely maps, tracking our world back to the foundation of human beings. Your body is nothing more than the ends of a means, which means even, even negative self-image can't stand between you and the person you were created to be. There is a difference between seeing and believing. So it's time you start to believe in the person you see in the mirror. Number three. You have autonomy. You are your own power. Individually, you have the strength to tower over the opinion of any indecent human that dares to tell you that you are less than beautiful because number four, you are more than beautiful. And yes, I said it time and again, but you are more than beautiful. You are Joan of Arc, both Lewis and Clark, destined to show the world the art of how far we still have to go and know. Being a pioneer, it's never easy, but you'll soon see that expanding ourselves to new horizons is worth it in the end. So love yourself in a way that never breaks, never bends. Embody it from the outside in. You, you are the start of a revolution, number five. Forget about the right to remain silent because you, you have the right to be heard. Your feet have the right to stand on the dirt of this earth. So let your stories teach and learn and laugh and cry. Let them seek understanding for with wisdom you'll find that Stories, they're kind of like people. Some are short, some are long, some are whispers, some are songs, but they're all still stories. And we are all still people encompassed with 400 quadrillion reasons to love. Thank you. Yeah.